right, welcome. This is Do Sports Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I'm just truly. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. This is the first episode. This is a milestone for me, for my family. Um, and let's get right into it. For everyone that's here coming in to download my podcast and to listen to me, supporting me, I really appreciate it. It's something that I've always wanted to do. This is something that I'm going to continue to try to progress in my career. Um, and, you know, you know, we're going to have a lot in store. This podcast is going to be very intuitive. It's going to be very uh, instant. Um, you know, you never know when I'll pop up and put up a pod. Um, and that's what's I I'm gonna be liking about it is is the fact that you know whatever is going on you know come to this podcast and you will you know hear my thoughts and hear what I got going on. Also, I also have a radio show on a do sports show, um, um on a uh, Hosanna Radio. You can also tune in to um every Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8. This is not, you know, th- that's another show that I've been doing for quite a while. And, you know, you can also tune in. I also have a Facebook page on uh, Do Sports Show on Facebook. That's where I do my, I also do a Facebook live show, simulcast with Do Sports Show on Hosanna Radio. Shouts out to Hosanna Radio team. And, um, you know, this is something that, that I'm branching out on, on for, you know, for me, um, doing a little something. I got a lot more stuff in store, um, working on a lot more things. This is just the beginning of you know, what I want to continue growing upon um, when it comes to, you know, the sports media portfolio that I will continue to grow upon and continue to work on. So I'm yours truly, Alvin Deuce. Thank you for tuning in. Um, of course, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got training camps opening up. We got the playoffs, of course, is here. We're in the West Conference and Eastern Conference Finals right now. But before all that, before all that, um, I just want to get into, I just want to, um, take a time out to, 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 um, do a moment of silence, and that moment of silence is 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 um is for yesterday, where we had um if I'm not mistaken, eighteen kids, six, eight, fourteen to eighteen kids, and two teachers shot dead at a school, elementary school, because of a, a mass shooting. And this is starting to, in my opinion, um, become a little bit too much for me because, you know, I have two kids of my own, two little toddlers. And for me to see, and I also have nieces right now that go to elementary school, middle school, and stuff like that. For me to see someone go in, to a school and just senselessly kill little kids, elementary students. It is, I can't even understand. I I don't even know the words to bring or to say in this situation. Like, this this is the worst thing that I could ever read on my feed on a 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 Tuesday. I'm pulling up my pulling out my phone and I see kids in elementary schools going to get an education, their parents bringing them to school for them to grow up to eventually become a a a, a, a respected person in society and uh, to eventually grow up to be a law abiding 
person in society. And for me to see someone senselessly go out and kill these little kids. And then don't also we also have had a shooting last week where someone went and was senselessly killing African Americans. When is this going to stop? When is this going to stop? I do not understand how these senseless killings can continue to go on. And it's really, really becoming a problem. And, you know, like I said, we have to, to 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 pray, but now we have to we have to figure out ways to protect our family, fathers out there, mothers out there. We have to figure out a way to protect our family because this is kind of getting out of hand. And my condolences to the families out there who. Have their had their kid be killed by someone, and now they're stuck. You're stuck with the with 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 the, with the memory of your child, the memory of your of your 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 father, your mother, your your grandmother, your grandfather. This is very sad. My condolences and. I didn't want to start this podcast like this, but I felt like it was necessary. And on behalf of the Do Sports Show, we're going to do a moment of silence. Moment of silence for all the lost ones the last couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Do Sports Show. Do Sports Podcast, I might add. And as you know, this is a sports podcast. So we will be talking about what's going on in today's sports, as you know. Last night, Golden State Warriors, um, they played Dallas last night. Dallas won 119 to 109. But before that game, Steve Kerr, I commend Steve Kerr for what he said before that game. The passion that oozed out of every pore of that man. I commend him because at that moment, he felt like it wasn't time to talk about some uh, someone's hamstring, someone's um, um, knee, or the mentality going into a game. And for me, I commend him for that. Well, to be quite honest, I'm surprised and shocked that for the sake of the country, that that game didn't even get postponed. Because the time and the 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 the, the, temp, the temperature in the air and the the, the moment would have sufficed. But we know things must go on, unfortunately. Which is a horrible way to put something. Things must go on after you lost your love. Your love. That is a horrible way to put it. But that's what happened. And um, as we transition over to this game, 
Luka Doncic. One of the best since he's come in. One of the best since he came into this game. And, you know, they were 0-3 in this series. But one thing about him, he's not going to stop fighting. And, once again, 13 point, 30 points. 14 rebounds, 9 assists. As I watch and analyze this game, one thing I realize is that the way this team is set up, you have bigs that will get the rebound, you have shooters that is surrounded around Luka Doncic. And here's the problem with this style of team. Because there is a benefit, but there also can be a problem. That can occur. And that problem is you have one game where all the shooters are lights out. Let's say all the shooters go at least 35% to 40% on their shots, their outside perimeter shots or mid range shots. But then you have a game. Like last week, like last game, where Reggie Bullock will go 0 for 11 at a period of time throughout the game. Now, this game, he went 38 minutes and scored 18 points. 38 minutes, 18 points. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, Reggie Bullock, if you didn't know before, he, you know now, he's an elite shooter. He has developed himself into an elite shooter. Now, it got to a point where you were, as a team with Dream on Green and whatnot, you were defending the, 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 the paint. You were stopping Luka Doncic from driving into the lane. But after a while, this past game, last night, they were shooting lights out. So now when they shoot lights out, Steve Kerr, he had to switch to his own. Because not only does he have to guard the paint, but he also had to guard the perimeter. And whenever the ball was swing, the defense had to swing as well. The zone had to swing as well. Because all the shooters and perimeter players for Dallas, they were on. When, when, when you have your shooters in this style of team and they're making their shots, they're very hard to defeat because you already have Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic, you know he's going to get his 30. You know he's going to get his rebounds. You know he's going to get his assists. Jalen Brunson, we've gotten to a point where we are accustomed to him at least scoring 20 to 25 points. So now you have two lead guards in Jalen Brunson and Luka Doncic who's going to get you 15 to 30 points a game, playmaking, assists, rebounds, running the offense. Now, all they have to do now is the shooters and the big men. Big men do their job in getting boards and staying in the paint and defending the paint. And also, the shooters, make sure you're ready to receive that pass to make that shot. And there's certain situations, there's certain times where when it rains, it pours. When it comes to 
these type of teams. When you're hot, you're hot. And, you know, with the Warriors, in my opinion, it happens. We all know, we all understand that they're going to be in the finals. There's no question about that. But don't also look at at this loss as a negative. Look at this loss as a positive if you're a Golden State Warriors fan. And the reason why I say that is because towards the fourth quarter, one thing I realized is when all the starters went back, went to sit down and they put in the bench, the bench brought them back. When I say the bench, I'm talking about Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Namanja, Belija, Belika. I can't remember. I can't pronounce his name. Damian Lee. And who else? Uh, um, you got also, what's his name? There's another one. I, yeah, Damian Lee. Now, those players brought the team back. These are the players throughout the last couple of years is what they have acquired, who they have acquired through the draft and whatnot. Since Klay Thompson was out, Steph Curry was dealing with some injuries, Draymond Green was dealing with some injuries. It was an off couple of years. But throughout those off couple of years, they have been able to accumulate some young talent. And those young talent is starting to blossom and grow into their own. And, for example, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole is a future all-star in this game. And it's, you could pretty much say it's the embarrassment of riches for this team to already have Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Stephen Curry, and Klay Thompson to just fall, to just by accident, acquire a player in Jordan Poole who is a future all-star which will be paid either from Golden State or from another team. That's going to be interesting to see in the coming year. And then this year to get Jonathan Kaminga a lottery pick. To have Damian Lee a future 3 and D, development 3 and D guy. And I think his name is Bielisa. I got it. I got it now. Bielitsa, who's a premier, future premier shooting shooting big man. And then you have Andre Andrew Wiggins. You acquired Andrew Wiggins. A lot of people has a lot had a lot to say about Andrew Wiggins when he was in Minnesota. Granted, he was number one overall pick. He's supposed to be the superstar of the team. He's supposed to be carrying the team. You're supposed to be the star guy. They traded him at Golden State. People were split to see how it even he would even turn out over there. He's turned out pretty well. He's made he became an all-star starter this year. And this um Western Conference Finals, he's playing lights out. Every team has a bad game. And I think this was the bad game for them in this Western Conference Finals. But the one thing that, in my opinion, is positive for this team is that your future, Golden State's future, is bright. I was listening to Bill Simmons' podcast, and he stated that it's like there's kind of two eras happening at the same time. You have the old era, and Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green, who's still playing at a pretty high clip and still in their prime at this current moment. And then you have the up-and-coming era in Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, Damian Lee. 
right? It's two errors happening at the same time. And great job by the ownership. Great job by the management to have an accumulation of talent on one roster and also Steve Kerr, he doesn't have a lineup, a six, seven, eight man lineup. No, this man plays up to 10, 11 players. So even with their stars playing, you have the young players coming in, getting valuable minutes, and also developing at the same time. This is a premier program, a premier franchise at this current moment with what they got going on right now. And don't forget James Wiseman. James Wiseman was the number two overall pick by the Golden State Warriors. He still didn't even play yet. Can you believe that? The future is bright for Golden State Warriors. So we all could already attest that everyone loses a game, man. Everybody has a bad game. And in my opinion, the next game, in game five, I can predict, in my opinion, Golden State will close it out and they will be in the NBA Finals. Let's transition over. I know I just said that everybody has a bad game. And that's the same thing for the Heat. The Heat had a bad game. Not only a bad game, they had an atrocious game. Let's say that. They had an atrocious game. It was horrible. It was bad. Now, you listeners that are on this podcast listening to me, this is my first time talking about it. I live in Miami. I'm a Heat fan. I'm a Dolphin fan. Big time. And um, there's something that is giving me fits. I've been having a little bit of trouble with. The national media does not respect the Miami Heat. I do not understand why. What is going on? Why is it Miami getting the respect that is due? In my opinion, they're the number one overall seed. The number one overall seed. And we don't and, and the, the, the lack of respect that we are getting is is mind boggling to me. And it's a two and two series. And I must add, I must say, Boston, their defense is the best defense I've ever seen. In a long, long time. Maybe I might even say the best defense since the days with the, the Pistons, with the Ben Wallace and the boys. Man. In my opinion. The best defense I've seen in a long time. But Miami has a good defense too. This is one of the best defenses I've seen Miami had in a long time. And it's a, it's a pretty even series in my opinion. Both teams are pretty stacked on both sides. Both teams, in my opinion, is even. Now, what happened last night, in my opinion, like I said, everybody has a bad game, but Eric Sposter should not have let Jimmy Butler play. His knee swelled up last game. We understand Jimmy Butler's a warrior. He's, in my opinion, a superstar. Some people think he's just an all-star and a star, but I feel like he is a superstar. And I just got to say, he should have sat out last game. He shouldn't have played. Should have given one game break. Let Victor Oladipo assume that role. You slot him there. Then. You could have put somebody like maybe um, 
I don't know. Um, you get you could have gave Duncan Robinson most of that minute, or 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 put Dwayne Dedman in a little bit more, or or you know gave gave uh, Max Truce more minutes, and Pat when it have it had it go that way with I guess more healthier squad because it got to a point where you know. They were putting pressure on Jimmy Butler, and Jimmy Butler, I mean, he only finished with six points. Granted, the start, the start of the game, with only one point, that's that's bad. I would have called timeout multiple times before it got out of hand, and, and, and um, when it comes when it came to that game, but Bam out of bio. At the end of the day, if you're gonna be a star, if you're gonna be considered one of the upper, upper echelon centers in his league, you got to be more consistent. You can't go scoring 31 points one game, then the next game you're scoring nine points to six rebounds. You have to be more consistent. You have to develop a routine of becoming a little bit more consistent. Um, It's a two, two teams are neck and neck. Both teams are 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 hampered with injuries and whatnot. But in my opinion, this game is going this team this series is going seven. And the the homer in me would want to say, let's go heat. They're gonna go to the finals. But in my opinion, if I'm gonna be objective, if I'm gonna come here and do sports podcast and and, and, and actually be objective to people that's listening. I'm going to say, man, it's a toss-up. Shouts out to, to Ume Udoka, the head coach of the Boston Celtics. I hope you're saying your name right. I'm very impressed, sir. For a first-time head coach, to be so confident and to be to have such command of a team, a young team, I might add, and to demand such tenacity on defense, and to receive it, and to demand such ownership and and such um uh uh res- like such uh uh responsibility or, or like to see the players have you know you know put on such such uh, a pride and and playing a certain way under you Adoka, I have to commend you because. For a first-time head coach to come in and do a job the way you've done, and, and don't get it twisted, I felt like it was a bad move at the time. I thought Brad Stevens was a wonderful coach, and I felt like there was no reason for Brad Stevens to not be the coach of this team. Brad Stevens has been a coach, a wonderful coach for years. I've been watching Brad Stevens since the Butler days when he brought them to the, the finals, the, the championship game and whatnot. So, you know, to, shouts out to the ownership. That was a great move. You brought put Brad Stevens in as a G you bring in Brad Stevens as a GM, move him up to the to the front office and you hire Udoka. And I guess that's what all you really needed. And I shouts out to Ume Udoka. Long time assistant for the Spurs. And um that's where he started out at. And you know, you've done a wonderful job, my friend. A wonderful job. And in my opinion, I want I'm leaning towards the Heat because I feel like the Heat is a be- is, is 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 a really good team. This Boston team in Miami, they're even. Like the defense, the tenacity, they're even. But the lack of respect that I see the national media is giving Miami is not warranted. It is not warranted, in my opinion. So, all you, all the ESPNs and the FS1s, you got to put some respect on Miami Heat's name, man. Come on. You got Eric Spolstra, arguably one of the best head coaches to coach in this game. You got Pat Riley, arguably one of the top three general managers, top three executives to play in this game. And 
to say that you know that this team is 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 not as good as Boston. I feel like that's just a bit disrespectful and a bit irresponsible, in my opinion, too. You heard it first from the Deuce Sports Podcast. This is your host, Alvin Deuce. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening in on the first episode of Deuce Sports Podcast. Stay tuned for more podcasts to come during the week. This is the beginning. This is the 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 first this is the historic podcast thank you for following me and i pray that you guys continue to follow me continue to support me as i grow with you guys this is do sports podcast signing out your boy alvin